Good morning. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. For today's video, we're going to take a look at another input device. If you've got an automatic garage door opener in your garage, and if you've ever looked at the bottom of the rails, the guide rails that uh, guide the door down towards the ground, uh, you probably notice two uh, sensors there with no visible means of light or anything like that. Those are infrared optical switches, or at least one of them. One's the transmitter, the other's the receiver. As long as that switch isn't broken or the light beam between them isn't broken, uh, the garage door will come down. If that uh, light beam is broken during the process of closing the door, it will stop and or reverse. And if you try to close it, uh, the garage door with something breaking the beam, it simply won't operate. Uh, this is a smaller scale uh, version of that, and uh, I picked it up off of Adafruit, uh, and as you've come to expect from them, a relatively high quality device. It's only $2.95. It's the 3 millimeter version. Uh, they've got a larger version with 5 millimeter uh, infrared LED on it, so it's got a little more range. This particular unit works up to 25 centimeters or 10 inches. Here on the bench, I've got it set up at eight and a quarter inches. And yes, we are running it or powering it on five volts. It would run on three or five, but uh, the uh, input device, uh, or I should say the output from it, is open collector, meaning that our input has to be pulled high with an uh, internal uh, pull-up resistor. And then when the beam is broken, it will pull that uh, all the way down to zero volts. And we'll show you that in the code in a minute. For wiring, it's very, very simple. Both of the devices have a red and a black uh, lead on them. And you would wire that back to the five volt on the Pico and to a ground point on the Pico. And then the only other wire you've got is very simply our uh, input wire. And that's shown here in white as it is on the real breadboard. And we've got that uh, connected to GP pin 16. Here in the program, uh, just some comments up above explaining a little bit of what's going on. Uh, we're going to import a couple of libraries, uh, the machine library giving us access to the hardware, and the U-Time or MicroTime library to give us a way to do some sleeping. Uh, we're going to create an object, uh, an LED object, on machine pin number 25, which is the onboard LED. Um, we're going to set that up as an output, and that'll show us the state of our switch when it's made or uh, either broken or not broken. Uh, we're going to create another object called this switch, light beam LB switch. Uh, and it's on GP16, and as I mentioned, we need to activate the pull-up resistor, and that sets the state to on from the internal pull-up resistor. Finally, we're going to turn the LED uh, off, and then we're going to let it sleep for a, a second, and then the program will start running in an infinite loop. We're going to check for the switch value. If it's true, uh, we're going to turn the onboard LED on and print uh, SW equals on down below here. And then as soon as that switch is broken, we will set this LED to off and print the phrase SW off. Now to demonstrate that, I'm going to use my buddy uh, Helmet, meet uh, our audience. Uh, this little guy is going to walk between the beams and uh, that will trigger our on-off state. Right now, we're clear. Here comes Helmet. He's blocking the beam, the light's out, and of course, the program is detecting that and saying uh, switch is off. Very, very simple uh, uh, demonstration, very simple implementation for this quite useful switch system. Um, I would say if you're planning on using this in an outdoor environment, do some experimentation first, because often in very bright sunlight, these things can fail. But uh, here on my very brightly lit workbench, it seems to be behaving very fine. 
Uh, perhaps in future videos, I'm going to come up with an application for this, and we'll do a video featuring it in, in uh, that situation as well. But hopefully this helps you with a project that you've got in mind where you need a unique type of switch. This just might be the ticket for you. That'll wrap it up for this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.